Hello everybody, uh, Mr. Drimes here bringing you another video. Uh, this video is going to be uh, starting up with our geometry section here. Uh, and it's going to be section 7-1 in your books uh, if you want to go and, and look at that. Uh, but it's going to be dealing with lines and planes. Okay, As you see here, we got several different uh, little definitions here that we're going to go through. Uh, first off, uh, is a point. A point is just a location and uh, just like we did when we were graphing, uh, graphing the characters and using the XY coordinate grid, we definitely graphed many different points and that and those single points marked a certain location and that's what we're meaning by it's just a location. A point has no length no width or a direction and uh, when we look at it a point would we just have something that looks like this right here and we would call this point A or like here this would be point R okay um, and a lot of what we're going to be talking about here is just how to uh, how to name things and how to write things down okay Next one is a line. A line is a series of points that extend infinitely in opposite directions. Okay, and an example is this right here. Notice that there are only two points here and it says it's a series of points. But we can actually see that there are infinitely many points in between these two. The best uh, example I know to think about it would be the number line. And like on a number line, you would have, you know, between one and two are infinitely many other points in between that are decimals uh, or fractional parts of it, in which, like, between one and two, we would have 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1 1.9, and then when we would get to two. And we can also break it down into even smaller bits such as between 1 and 1.1 we could have some more points and decimals in between there and break that decimal even further down into hundreds and thousands and shrink it even closer down. Um, this line right here notice that there are arrows on both sides and that means that we're going from A through B infinitely and we are also going in an opposite direction from B through A infinitely as well. We note this as this is the symbol for line. So this says line A, B. This also goes by another name because we don't know where the starting point and end points are. So we can also call this line B, A. Okay. Next, we have a ray. Okay, rays are just a part of a line in which you will have one starting point, or you may call it an end point. Uh, I like to think of it as a starting point, and it, that one point is going to extend infinitely in only one direction. Okay, so for example, here we're starting at A, going through B, and we never turn back. Okay. Um, this would be ray AB. Notice I don't have an or here and name it something else. The reason why we can't name this anything else is because there's a definite starting point and we're starting at A going through B and continuing on. If we wanted to have a ray A or ray BA, we would actually have to turn this around and go from B going through A. Notice that since it's a part of a line, we can put this up on top of this line right here and notice that this is just a photocopy of that without this arrow right here. Okay, And you, you can see those are the same. And then ray BA is a photocopy of that one as well but without the B here or without the arrow coming out of the B. Okay. Next, we have a uh, line segment. A line segment, once again, is just a part of a line in which we have an end point and a starting point. Um, 
Notice that the arrows are not protruding out of either one. We're starting at one letter and stopping at the other. The symbol for line segment is just a line or, or with no arrows. And then we write the uh, capital letters down here, AB, line AB. And since we don't know if we're starting at A and going to B or we're going from B going to A, we can call it line segment AB or line segment BA. We can compare this once again back here with the line to, to see that it is uh, definitely part of that line. But this time, realize that this line segment is this line if we get rid of the arrows. Okay. Um, next, uh, when we talk about lines that intersect, they're lines that intersect or cross each other at, at, at least one point. Uh, some real world examples of intersect, intersecting lines could be an intersection, like for example right here, maybe imagine that this is a four way stop here. There's a road going this way and a road going this way. This is the intersection in which the two roads meet. Uh, another intersection here, here, and even though this one right here, it doesn't look like it's going to cross, but if we theoretically kept on going with this line, it would cross. And still, these are intersections. It's kind of like this is a road that comes up here. we got a stop sign here, and this road right here, Maybe it continues on, or maybe there is a stop sign here and here, and this is a dead end. So it'd be like the road going this way, and you either have to turn left or right, or otherwise you go into a ditch. This would be an intersection as well. Um, and I know you've heard that word intersection before, because that's that's what we deal with all the time when we're driving or riding along in in the car and uh, we come up to an intersection which is, is just an intersection in the road and it's the same definition in math. Parallel lines are lines that never intersect, that never intersect. Now there are examples of this in the real world and this is kind of the best I could do with a drawing but we just want to have a line that's never going to cross ever. Okay. Some examples of parallel lines uh, the most famous one would be railroad tracks. Okay, the railroad tracks are parallel to each other, and if they would, if these were to ever cross, then the the train would derail because the train, the the wheels on the uh, trains, they never move from being parallel. So if they were to ever cross here, they would they would derail. Um, Anytime you have a, a, a train in which you have, or a, the train has to uh, cross over onto another track, they actually have little sections where these tracks would turn, but technically the rails themselves never cross. So you can have a curve and the, the train tracks never cross, but they have to curve at exactly the same uh, amount at the same time so that they never do cross because if they ever go beyond parallel and wind up going to where they're going to intersect it will derail. Um, so also another thing about parallel is uh, parallel bars in gymnastics although they're not on the same plane they're parallel to each other in different planes. Okay. Skew lines are lines that are neither parallel nor intersecting. Okay, um, and you heard me say, uh, talk about planes. I forgot that was something that I didn't add in here. But when we're talking about planes, planes are basically different spaces that we have. Uh, for example, your height. Okay, um, if we if we had a person's height we could take different sections of that person as we go up through the height. Once we go above their height, there are more planes above them. It's just like, you know, we're going to take a cross section of where the person is one inch tall, two inches tall, three inches tall, four inches tall. Then after you get so far, if a person is five foot five inches tall and you get to five point five foot six inches, now we're dealing with an inch above their height, but there's still another layer up there. Um, anyways, 
Uh, your homework for this section is going to wind up being page 335. And a lot of it is going to be dealing with definitions. It's not going to be a whole lot of math. I don't really think there's any math to do. It's just mainly definitions and naming things. Uh, if you have any issues with it, just let me know. See you next time.